All right, welcome back to Last Play. So we're going to be uh, talking about strange combat encounters that we've had mm -hmm. in our times with D&D, mm -hmm. of which there's probably plenty. So many. Like, I am notoriously unlucky when it comes to anything random, um, except for gambling. Apparently, I'm extremely lucky as a gambler, which is why I don't gamble. Because I feel that, like, that's where all of my bad luck balances out. And if I start getting super lucky in gambling, I'm going to get so much more unlucky in every other aspect of my life. Mm. So I avoid that. So, you sound like a gambler. <laughs> pretty much. And yes, before anyone comments, I'm aware of like statistics and how they work and how that's completely not true. But, you know, I get to live my life and realize how unlucky I am. So, we do this... In our in our D and D games, we house rule that like critical hits and critical failures are um, open ended. Oh wow! How? Not sure how that died. I had a lot of HP there. Yeah, you might have been hit by everything from all sides at once. Um, yeah, so they're open ended. So if you roll a natural twenty, you have to roll to confirm that critical hit. And so like if you roll a natural twenty, you automatically hit, and then you roll to see if, and you roll again, and if that attack hits, then it counts as a critical hit. However, if when you're confirming the critical hit, it comes up as another natural 20, um, the critical hit's confirmed, and also you start threatening additional criticals, like a double critical or a triple critical. And so continuing to roll 20s over and over again can lead you to getting a critical hit that's like extremely powerful. What we usually do is just um, increase the critical damage by another one times for every additional crit that's uh, confirmed. Um, however, the same also goes for critical failures. If you roll a 1 and on the confirmation for the failure, roll another one, well, that starts exploding, and you get pro progressively more unlucky in your um, in whatever it is you're trying to do. So this is one time. It's We're, we're low level, we're like level two, and we're exploring this forest looking for some lost kids. Mm -hmm. And the snake comes by, and I roll a knowledge nature check to identify the snake. And roll a natural one four times in a row. Oh. <laughs> I'm like... I identify it as a basilisk. I start shouting and screaming as everyone's saying, Close your eyes! It'll petrify you! Run away, everyone! It's like a garden snake. It's the most unthreatening thing in the world. And they're like, okay, that was pretty bad luck. All right, let's check the weather. Survival check. Two natural ones in a row. Double critical failure. I'm like, okay. Um, I'm not sure how to double critical failure predicting the weather, so I'm just going to assume that it's raining right now. We need to find cover. <laughs> it's like, oh. It's raining. It's it's ready. we got a typhoon coming around the way. We gotta build a giant. Thirty seconds, get down. <laughs> so there's been some interesting things, but in combat, this this happens a lot. That I roll a lot of ones. There's one time where there is a ninja in the rafters, and our entire party was not very equipped for ranged combat. Um, however, I was. This was one of my dervish dancer bards, who was like a selfish bard that only buffs himself. But I had this ability called bladed dash, where I would. Teleport forward and th did you pick up that fine short bow? That probably sells for a lot. Mm, yeah. Um, had bladed dash, which allowed him to teleport to a location and attack people along the way. Mm. So I'm like, oh, I bladed dash up to the rafters and um, attack the ninja. And so I get up there, and the DM's like, well, you're teleporting onto rafters. So like, roll an acrobatics check to make sure that you don't fall off. And I'm like, I'm a bard. I have like a plus fifteen to my acrobatics. I should be fine. Natural one. <laughs> so like, I make the attack fine, and then like managed not to land on the rafters and just fall down <laughs> i'm like okay next round bladed dash um make the acrobatics check natural one in the attack roll and he's like um you lose balance and fall off the rafters i'm like damn it i got one more cast of bladed dash bladed dash natural one again on the acrobatics check fall down mm -hmm. so my entire party um you want intelligence you start casting so many spells that it's so important okay charisma is also really good da, 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 da. um Sorry, maybe wisdom? 3% more experience? There's a level cap, so it's not uh, worthwhile. All right. Oop, there we go. Uh, and Oh, you can level up burning hands oh, even more or meditation. meditation. Yeah. MP there regen is so important. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so essentially my entire party had just watched me like teleport up to the rafters, fall down three times in a row trying to deal with this one ninja who wasn't all that dangerous but because he was hiding in the rafters like we had so few options towards and then the the witch was like and sleep and just sent the ninja to sleep and he fell out of the rafters <laughs> I just felt extremely worthless at that moment hmm. so sad so sad um 
uh, what have I done? I had a... L I played it in a very long game based on, uh, a Pathfinder game, uh, based on the, uh, the setting of Planescape. Um, so it was, uh, it's kind of a, a, it was a fantasy, fantasy setting. It was like D&D, &D, where there's, it really, um, utilizes the full multiverse that, that D&D &D has, the, the, mul the ah, massive numbers of planes, the planes of existence that are there, and, uh, you travel between them. Um, and yeah, because you, like you, that was the one that took place in Sigil, right? Which is the yeah. City of Portals. The City of Portals, and then every every week you'd be in a new plane of existence, uh, saving it somehow. Yeah, um, a very Stargate-style campaign. Yeah, yeah, very Stargate-y. Um, and uh, we, played, we played in it for a very long time, and I had so. a sniper ninja. Half sniper, half ninja. Um, and I was really good at shooting my bow very long distances and I the penalties for shooting long distances were almost nothing um, so I could I could shoot extremely far away and deal sneak attack damage from extremely far away so I'd be like like a couple blocks down helping out with a fight instead of actually being there yeah because I, I didn't I didn't need to be close I could I could shoot them from far away they wouldn't even know where I was um, and then they'd die nice yeah but uh I, I was only I was only accurate where it counted, once. <laughs> Every single time, mash that square, um, man. Mash my my pack's full, so square. I can't pick up anything. Um, my pack's full too. Oh, time to recall. Time well, to recall. retell the story. Um, yeah, yeah. There would be in a lot of combats, I just would not hit a lot. Um, is a is a side effect of multi classing, but I uh, wouldn't hit a lot. Uh, the one time. I did. The one time I did hit something was in an adventure where we had to sneak into hell to steal back a sword. Um, oh, I'm not strong enough to carry anymore. Why am I buying? Um, we had to steal back a sword, and we did so, uh, but only at the allowance of the Archduke of that level of hell. And so the spell, uh, the sword itself, was a. Uh, plus five Holy Avenger. So it's a very powerful evil oh, slaying. Oh, yeah. Is that, that's Karsamir, right? Hmm? That's called Karsamir, right? Uh, maybe. Okay. Um, I don't think this one had a specific name. I'm like, I'm, I'm sure it did, but... Oh, yeah. uh, not when we, um... Were... Not in this, not in the scale of the campaign. Yeah. Okay. So, so we steal it back, and the reason, the reason they needed it is, uh, there's a, there's a town on the, the outer edge of the planes that uh was the the people in there were good enough they're lawful good enough that their town might just descend into heaven uh as a whole and that's what they wanted and so they needed the sword back to complete the ritual okay yep however when we stole it back from hell at the, well we tried to steal it and then the archduke found out about it but then he let us have it oh that's always bad it, it was bad um but we brought it back anyway should I, should I ever scale, scale mail? Yeah, man. Scale okay. mail's good. I just right. bought some, too. Okay. Um, nice. Bam. Look at that. My armor basically doubled coming back to town here. Cool. Let me... You still have two points left in to level up, man. Really? What? Yeah. Okay. There we go. And shield. Two points left, huh? You can either up your manager, regen some more, or just save it for next level. 18 damage because then you'll, you'll you'll definitely have enough for a new spell if you save it for next level mm. but more mana regen is hard more to pass more mana up. regen uh, you know what mana potions are pretty pretty cheap true uh, I'll save it uh, where was I yeah they so we brought it back to the city on the edge of the the plains um, and gave it to a paladin who was supposed to preside over the ritual paladin then started murdering everyone uh, and we found that a pit fiend, a extremely powerful devil, had possessed the sword. Uh, and he was a... Um, had possessed the sword and was planning to, instead of dragging us into heaven... You got one of these, by the way. You should equip ooh, it. Uh, instead, of drag, uh, instead of ascending the town to heaven, he was going to drag us down to hell. Nope. The, the oh, this one. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Perfect. Um, yeah, and so... Uh, 
he was t- this this paladin who's now possessed by the devil, um, specific specific pit, pit fiend devil. Yeah, um, was teleporting around, summoning summoning undead from the crypt, uh, and we we rushed over to the crypt to stop him. And I uh, and he was very far away. Like we were, he I don't I don't think he even saw us yet, but we saw him just very. A ways away, down yeah. down the street, down yonder, down yonder, like way 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 down the street, um, and so I I had uh, I was bit, I, I was kind of like a green arrow type character. When your one gimmick is bows, you have a lot of arrows. Yeah, and I had a lot of different kinds of arrows. And one of them was adamantine arrows that can pierce pierce anything, um, and so I thought, you know what? I'm just going to smash this sword. I'm just, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna pierce it and break it. Um, yeah. So from, from like, uh, like, but I had, I had a short bow which didn't have that, that high of a range, but I could shoot it pretty far. But from like a thousand feet, I was like, okay, you know what? I'm gonna take a shot at the sword because the sword's what's currently possessing him. Yeah. And the GM was like, okay, okay, roll for it. Natural twenty. Nice. Yep. Uh, so, <laughs> and and it was like feasible because uh, yeah, because like you had the arrow, and there was kind of your whole gimmick to just it was my whole distance. gimmick to shoot things from very far away. Uh, and I did, yeah, I shot it completely out of his hands. It didn't break the sword, but it shot it out of the the paladin's hands. Uh, we rushed in, mopped up a couple of undead, and then went to go take the sword when uh, his body was specifically possessed by the uh, uh, the yes, pit fiend. Because the DM's like, well, I want I designed this boss encounter. You're gonna face it one way or the other. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and teleported away again. We had to chase him around for a bit. But that was that was the one time I was I was actually useful. Um, a lot of other times they're like, Dakota, shoot the the amulet off the wizard, and I'm like, I'm shooting, and uh, like everything, I'd just, it'd be like a one or a two on my on my D20. Of course, and I'm like, well, well, I tried. Well, that yeah, that virgin's getting sacrificed. Right now. What Dang a shame. It. Well, next time on Last Play, we will try to prevent virgin sacrifices. Yeah. I mean, we, we're constantly trying to prevent that. I mean, yeah, I mean we'll, are, we, we'll are give, we really we'll trying to prevent the, that? We'll give them the opportunity to have sex first, and then, then we can sacrifice them. That's okay. They won't be virgins. Uh, fun fact about virgin sacrifices. Don't go too far forward. That's the boss room. Is that it wasn't necessarily our understanding of virginity that, like, they hadn't had sex. Like, it was sometimes. But, um, often virgins' sacrifice meant they had, like, never been part of the sacrifice ceremony before. It was, like, virgin in that sense. That's rude. Yeah, and, like, I think over time with, like, Christianity's idea of, like, virgin, it became, like haven't had sex mm. but like th- that's not necessarily what it meant at all okay mm. that's interesting so what, what you're saying is mary just never was thrown into a volcano <laughs> before giving birth to, to jesus no, unfortunately. <laughs> does that or, mean that know, we're all virgin, virgin birth i don't know <laughs> <laughs> It turns out we're all the virgins. Yeah. There, there, there's a, there's a place in South America where they literally threw virgins. Well, I don't, I don't know if they're actual virgins, but into a volcano. You're now yeah. starting to doubt the extent of their virginity. Yeah, I'm doubting they're just, you know, the the people who weren't virgins in that community must have been pretty tough. Yeah. To get out of that volcano. <laughs> right. Right. 